Hanford, the most contaminated place in the Western Hemisphere. Nuclear reactors, radioactive groundwater plumes, and the effort to clean up some of the most dangerous pollution on Earth. It's all true. That is Hanford. But do you also think of the Hanford nuclear site as a reservoir of biodiversity, a stronghold for salmon, or a refuge for rare species? Hanford is that, too. Columbia Riverkeeper engages people in one of the most important and complicated cleanups in the world. Out of necessity, we focus on the pollution at Hanford and encourage people to hold the U.S. government accountable for decades of radioactive and toxic pollution. But there is so much more to understanding this area than the cleanup effort. Let's get inspired and explore the hidden beauty, natural treasures, and the unique, complex place we call Hanford. This is a place worth fighting for. Hanford is a paradox. Depending where you zoom in, it can look poisoned or it can appear pristine. It's a place of contradictions. In many ways, the wildness of Hanford is an accident. The Hanford Reach includes Saddle Mountain Wildlife Refuge and the Hanford Reach National Monument. Most of the U.S. Department of Energy operations take place in the central part of the site, which is surrounded by a large buffer. This wide buffer zone, originally set aside for security, resulted in nearly 80 years without farming or industrial development. Federally recognized tribes who've used this area for hunting, gathering, and ceremony since time immemorial have treaty guaranteed rights of access. However, federal government interference heavily infringes on these rights. It's been 70 years since a lot of tribal members have been able to have access to that land. And that has really hurt the, the cultural uh, connection um, that they've had. And we're trying to keep that alive. And there's a lot of people still alive who understand that and who know that. And this knowledge needs to be passed on to the younger generation. Minimal public access and restricted tribal access means there's no camping, grazing, mining, or development. The result? The U.S. government unintentionally preserved one of the largest intact shrub step ecosystems in the West. And there's more. Along this reach flows 51 miles of the Columbia River. Nowhere is the paradox of Hanford more apparent. In a 1,200-mile river dominated by dams and reservoirs, this 51 miles is the only remaining free-flowing stretch. It supports the last remaining main stem salmon spawning habitat and is home to 43 different fish species, including threatened and endangered species. While this reach is vulnerable to Hanford's radioactive groundwater plumes, the cool water, islands, riffles, gravel, and backwaters produce the largest remaining stocks of fall Chinook salmon in the basin and support some of the most productive spawning areas in the Northwest. The Columbia River's iconic salmon are much like Hanford. They are fragile and yet resilient, but both hang in the balance as the decisions we make today will determine their fate. If we lose sight of the intricacies and view Hanford as simply a poison landscape, we may respond with despair. It is vital that we remember the complexity and the paradox that is Hanford. And we must uphold the cleanup at Hanford in the same way we must safeguard the protection and restoration of our iconic salmon, because there is simply too much to lose. Join us as we explore the ecosystems, habitats, and species that make Hanford so special, and remind us why cleanup is so critical.